What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today I'm going to walk through the very extensive set of steps that I had to do to get TensorFlow working on my M1 MacBook. It seems that some people are able to get their install working with just a handful of commands, but that was not my experience. And if you're watching this video, it's likely yours too. I do think the approaches shown in this video are good practices, and I think this will end up working for most people, even if it ends up being a lot of steps. I need to credit some GitHub threads that led to my successful install. I'm going to link in the description to the specific thread where I copied part of their install process that will be shown in this video. But from there, I did have to add some extra steps and customize it quite a bit. Again, a, a big thanks to the GitHub users that provided their very helpful information. All right, we're going to start off by going to this GitHub link. And we're going to download mini forge specifically we want the apple silicon version so i'm downloading that now then what we're going to want to do is navigate to our downloads folder and then install this file with a bash command have to keep entering through some of the license information. Yes, we accept the terms and conditions, and then you have to find a path where you should install it to. Just the default one they suggest is fine. And as you can see, I already have mine installed, so it won't install again. Now what you should do is close out of the terminal and then restart and then see if Conda works. You can do this by typing in conda and see if anything comes up. If it doesn't, you'll see conda uh, command does not exist. We now need to create a conda environment, specifically with Python 3.8. TensorFlow will not work with 3.9, so we need to specify 3.8 here. We give it the name of Python 3.8 demo v4. <laughs> Yours would probably be Python 3.8. Um, I, I did a couple versions of this tutorial, so I had to come up with a more creative name. <laughs> and uh, just pushing yes to install all these packages. Now that our Conda environment has been created, we need to activate the Conda environment. We're going to do that by simply conda activate and then the environment name and it actually gives you the command to use just a few lines up and as you can see the virtual environment has been activated now we're going to want to go over to apple's github repo so they have a forked version of tensorflow that they've built specifically for arm use it with the M1 computers. We're going to want to download this release. It is a zipped tar file. So go ahead and download that. Now we're going to want to unzip this tar file. So you can do that by tar XVF and then the file name. Okay, so this is going to unzip all of the files in that particular directory into a new directory called tensorflow underscore Mac OS. Okay, so now we're gonna to want to find the location of the ARM64 files within that unzip directory. So we're gonna go ahead and change our directory to tensorflow underscore Mac OS. And then again, change our directory to ARM64. Then what we'll want to do is type in PWD to get the full path of the current working directory. You can see I, I have mine here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And what we want to do is we want to set two variables. The first is going to be the path to our libraries or libs. And that's going to be that directory we just copied. It's going to tell the installers where to look for the ARM64 libraries. Our next environmental variable that we want to set is 
env, and we want this to point to our conda environment. So we can find that by typing conda env list, and then finding the full path of the conda environment. So now we have our libs and our env variables set. You can see in some of the pip install commands that they actually are referencing these variables. Anytime you see a dollar sign in front of the env or libs strings, these are referencing those variables that we set. Okay, we want to install with conda both cached property as well as six, uh, steps number eight and nine there we now want to move into our pip installs too. So I'm just gonna copy and paste these over, wait for them to complete. We are installing the ML compute library here. Now we have a bunch of conda installs to run through. Uh, I do recommend doing these one at a time in case something fails, you'll be able to see easily where it failed. Okay, moving on to our last step here. This is actually going to install TensorFlow for us. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the version number in that library path lines up with what you have in your downloads folder. I know that was an issue I faced at one point. I had to just change a zero to a one because the version had been updated. One step that I need to add to those directions on the right is the pip install tensor board. That's going to allow us to do some monitoring. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just opening up a shell with a Python command and then importing TensorFlow. You can see that there are no errors upon this import and we are good to go. I hope your install worked successfully and that you are ready to do some very serious deep learning on your M1. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please consider giving it a like as well as a subscription to the channel. I'm always coming at you with more machine learning related content. Stay tuned if you want to see more of that. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.